so are you envisioning kind of a physical world video game when you're saying people going on missions and stuff like i uh i kind of pictured like people going on quests but more so you want to you want to sway them towards earth physical stuff yeah i think it goes i think it goes in and out of it's going to be all the above yeah i think the augmented world is going to allow us to realize that there's so much more potential to using our eyes or using screens or using glasses or whatever type of hardware and technology continues to develop. But what it comes down to is the way that we're interacting socially with the digital world and how it interoperates with the physical world. So yes, it's like, you know, if you're spending all your time in the digital world, you can say like, Oh, well, that's a form of escapism or, you know, you're spending all day on Fortnite. Like, yeah. Like maybe if Fortnite had some flow that was like part of the game is to go into the physical world and do a task or do a thing that created a merit system that when you came back into the digital world, you know, you're maybe a little bit more fulfilled or maybe like you're a little more, you know, stoked or you feel balanced because like, I don't know, you put your feet in the dirt for a second and, and you didn't spend all your time as a robot inside of a computer. So that's kind of like what the whole interoperable theory is, is like as we continue to develop and allow these identities and these characters and these avatars to like not only roam through the different platforms, allowing characters to go into Fortnite and allowing the Zoids to like go in and out of the different gaming systems, but it's like how can we also allow the Zoids to like come here? and come to the physical place and what are those missions and so that's kind of like where we're in the dream space right now um as we develop you know first developing the operating system and creating the framework for our communities to thrive and other communities to come together and thrive and starting to uh we're, we're starting to engage with different gaming studios and different augmented reality apps and um yeah just very much in dream state right now so figuring it out as we go that's awesome what, what does the more boring stuff look like? Like uh, the development of stuff. I know a lot of people, especially people that kind of study tech and, and Web3 stuff, uh, but like you said, don't have a lot of develop developing background. There, there's probably a lot of people that have cool ideas of what to do. Uh, so how did you guys kind of go from idea to developing uh, and building a team that that codes or, or graphics or kind of the, the yeah. business stuff? Yeah, yeah. Boring side is very much, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the framework or it's the, the structure, um, knowing that it takes a lot of legal resources, a lot of financial resources, funding, working with investors, um, you know, building out the actual systems and the build, you know, taking, taking a Google doc and explaining like 50 pages, like what are the actual features of the different platforms and like, how does this button link to this button and going through and actually designing within a Figma file, like every aspect as to where things go. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's boring or it can be, maybe it's not quite as fun as like actually making the totem animations or like telling these cool fun stories or interacting with everybody in the community but the framework and the structure is what allows us to animate that, the, the frame, if you will. And so, yeah, it's, um, for us, we love to, I think, I think we go into other platforms and it's like, it just doesn't feel right. Like I freaking love Instagram, but only because that's like where all my friends are. But whenever I try to actually, when I think about what it actually is, it's, it's very, it's not very fulfilling to me. It has this infinite scroll feature and it's very, it has all of the search features that show you flashy things according to, you know, what you like. And, and to me, it just feels like it's not where I want to spend the rest of my life. And so that's where I'm like, okay, well, what, how do I want to socially interact in a digital space? How do I want to connect with my friends and family in a way that feels more fulfilling or feels more um, exciting? And so, yeah, um, I guess to kind of like, tie that one up it's it comes down to a lot of uh critical thinking a lot of writing out and a lot of designs and then a lot of partnerships a lot of agreements lots and lots of documents and as we're shifting right now from being an llc to dissolving into um a, a 
token that's held within different countries around the world, all kinds of, uh, you know, legal calls. And there's definitely a lot of stuff. And and luckily we have Daniel, who's just a savant in the space as far as taking on that CEO role and Zayla in the strategy space, as far as like partnerships and a lot of that stuff. My job's definitely quite a bit, probably more colorful than theirs a lot of times. And so, you know, I spend most of my time in the, in the, the, mo- the more boring sides of what I do is more like press and, and actually writing out the copy for how we're bringing these partnerships and agreements and these structures to the public in a beautiful way. Awesome. Um, let's say that we're in an age where we just have awesome smart glasses and the metaverse is just here and everybody's using it as often as Instagram. Where would um, Totem fit into that world? Like, what would that, what would the user experience be? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm personally obsessed with developing optical tech stacks. I think our eyes are, like, one of the coolest parts of, of the human. My background really comes from uh, working with cameras and telling stories and, and creating emotions within the way that a camera can receive light and in a way that... Um, you can take those light frames and edit them together within a timeline and and create a digital asset that um, can be stored and viewed forever if you, you know, store it correctly. And um, so I'm personally very interested in that space. And um, I'm kind of obsessed with this like internal retina display where like you can use organic light and use very minimal energy to um, work with the way that the light actually comes into our eyes um it's a it's an interesting concept but in a lot of ways it's it's no different than me looking at the screen and the way that the light comes into my eyes it's just possibly a little bit more um the term invasive isn't correct but it's more you know biological yeah Um, but in, in a lot of that space of like oh well like how does the tech interact with the human biology it can be a little weird. It can be a little, it can create, you know, certain maybe fears or anxieties because of the way that sci-fi movies have displayed it before where it, it takes over you or, you know, you're putting things in your brain. And, and I don't, I personally don't like any of that. I, I like the flow of like having cer- having sovereignty, having, you know, a, a certain presence over your own digital sovereignty. And I think that's another part of like the whole Zoe projects where it's that's what it's all about is like maintaining and governing your digital sovereignty um and that's that's a lot of the core value of the opal white paper that we're writing which is basically totem's system its flow and and the way we're presenting our theory and to to the world and so to answer your question totem very much fits into the space of like working with earth's natural rhythms to create, you know, a, a harmony between the digital and the physical. Um, it's in, it's inevitable that it's here and that it's full, you know, you can hop in VR and it's a crazy experience. Um, but I think that VR again, doesn't quite allow you to maintain full sovereignty between realms. It's you put your glasses on or you put your goggles on and you are fully in there and you're, consciousness or your awareness of this place is dissolved and so your physical sovereignty is kind of at you know at uh it not in danger but it's you know it's (laughs) it's slightly taken over in a different way so um again to answer your question totem (laughs) is going to build and get into all of it you know hardware software creating these systems but the goal is to use it build it in a, in a DAO format so our community is here with us and we're building strong and, and we want to run all things by everybody and especially when it comes down to digital sovereignty um and then part two of that would be that yeah this physical digital interoperability will um will and should create a different way of um social interaction that is pulls away maybe from this notion of like an infinite scroll or addictive escapism or, you know, different kind of like rabbit holes like that. And hopefully as we pay attention to like our human selves and understanding what 
digital sovereignty is um, we'll find out this the coolest way to play these games. I mean, as tech evolves, it, it is kind of always weird from going from the past to the future. I mean, phones are kind of weird and like from definitely a past perspective of in comparison to like AR, uh, I'm sure people were like, people would describe phones as invasive. People have it on them 24 seven and there's probably some weird radiation with it. Um, For sure. And especially to try, try to imagine telling someone about an iPhone that lived in the year 1836, like yeah. it would trip out, you know? It's not too long but, ago either. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of my favorite quotes. Um, it says like the future is different but it's also rooted in today's culture. So, you know, I think it's, I think there's this fear or this like societal, like collective thought that like this, this like quantum overtaking of tech is going to like, there was, there's like a breaking point where AI comes out and like takes over. And I just like, I, I personally don't, I don't believe that. I think that it's, it's it's going to be rooted in today's culture and the the mechanics of the world we know um it's it's balanced it's there's a there's a toroidal mathematic equation within what we exist in a, an energy force if you will that's um that has a rhythm and that rhythm is here to work with us do you have that equation off top I have it tattooed on my leg, actually. <laughs> what is it? The uh, uh, it's like V equals some some pi to the second power. <laughs> I can pull it up. And what but, is that? Is there a name for it? Yeah, it's the it's just the uh, the equation for the torus. It's a T O R U S, and so that's kind of this like it's the most scalable equation. It's like the breadth of the universe. And so when you get into um, the toroidal fields it's like every human has one it's like this it's this infinite energy loop that an earth has one that's why a lot of people think the earth's flat because it actually kind of looks more like a donut you know and less of a it's not a perfect sphere it's kind of <laughs> oh that yeah that shape yeah <laughs> uh yeah i used to mess with 3d modeling and that was the name of that and i was like i've never heard of that shape before <laughs> Yeah, it's one of my favorites. If you hop in our Telegram group and do backslash Xander, it just pops up with a <laughs> Taurus. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, as we kind of wrap up, um, I did want to say, like, you know, as, as AR goes, as, as tech evolves, um, and it gets more, like, biological, there's going to be a thing of, like, people's trust will be from, like, people have to trust it, you know? And as as blockchain kind of helps with like transparency of technology and you kind of see that with like even just companies going forward that people are getting more pressured to be like transparent about even just like money or ethics um you said like culture is is a p important part of the technology i think that going forward people that are making web3 stuff um kind of have to be intentful with it or else it, it could get pretty sticky <laughs> 